We have all heard about the stars and witnessed their beauty in the night sky since our childhood, but have you ever heard about stellar classification of stars? If your answer is no, then you have landed at the right place, because this video will touch upon this topic. Before going too deep, first let us understand what exactly we mean by stellar classification of stars. In astronomy, stellar classification is the classification of stars based on their spectral characteristics, i.e. relation between wavelength and some other variables. Stellar classification scheme for assigning stars to types according to their temperatures as estimated from their spectra. For most of its active life, a star shines due to thermonuclear fusion of hydrogen into helium in its core, releasing energy that traverses the star's interior and then radiates into outer space. A star's life begins with the gravitational collapse of a gaseous nebula of material composed primarily of hydrogen along with helium and trace amounts of heavier elements. When the stellar core is sufficiently dense, hydrogen becomes steadily converted into helium through nuclear fusion, releasing energy in the process. According to the latest data, the observable universe contains 1 times 10 to the power of 24 stars. The nearest one to our planet is our Sun. Scientists have studied stars for quite a time now and divided them on the basis of their age and temperature. We will discuss one such classification today, which is the stellar classification of stars. Stars are classified by their spectra, the elements that they absorb, and their temperature. There are seven main types of stars in order of decreasing temperature O, B, A, F, G, K, and M. We all see the stars twinkling, but have you ever wondered how do stars twinkle? To answer this, let's go back to our school days where we were taught refraction of lights. Twinkling of stars is caused by the passing of light through different layers of a tempestuous atmosphere. But in reality, stars don't twinkle. They only appear as such because of the interaction between our eyes, stars, and Earth's atmosphere. The formation of a star is not a quick process. It takes around a million years to form a star from an accumulation of gas and dust which collapses due to gravity in its nebula. Our universe has nebulas in which new stars are being formed all the time. Though we haven't observed much of these stars present in our infinite universe, but those which are observed give a good idea of their composition and properties. Now let's go back to the base of the topic stellar classification. It is a scheme assigning stars their type on the basis of their temperatures, as calculated from their spectra. The classification of temperature is done on the basis of Wien's law regarding black body radiation. The universally accepted system of stellar classification is a combination of two schemes. The Harvard system, which is based on the star's surface temperature, and the MK i.e. morgan keenan system, which is based on the star's luminosity. The MK, also called Yerke system, is the work of the American astronomers W. W. Morgan, P. C. Keenan, and a few others. It is based on two sets of parameters, a refined version of the Harvard OM scale and a luminosity scale of grades 1 for supergiants, 2 bright giants, 3 normal giants, four subgiants, and five main sequence or dwarf stars. Further specifications may be used such as grade 1A for bright supergiants and grades 6 and 7 for subdwarfs and white dwarfs respectively. In the Harvard system, the stars are classified as the hottest to coolest using letters such as O, B, A, F, G, K, M, where O is the hottest, 25,000 Kelvin, and blue in color, and M is the coolest, 3,500 Kelvin, star which is red in color. The letters are further subdivided from hot to cool, an adapted and famous mnemonic for memorizing the sequence of stellar classification is, oh be a fine girl, guy kiss me. The hotter stars are sometimes referred to as early and the cooler is late, with the discovery of brown dwarfs objects that form like stars but do not shine through thermonuclear fusion. The system of stellar classification has been expanded to include spectral types 
L, T, and Y. Now let's get to know about the classification in detail. Starting with the letter O, O-type stars are the hottest, luminous, and rarest of all main stars. They have very complicated surroundings, which makes the measurement of their spectra difficult. Most of the massive stars lie within this particular type. Because of their massive and giant size, they have very hot cores and burn through their hydrogen fuel very quickly. So they tend to burn brighter and are the first stars to leave the main sequence. Their spectra have dominant lines of absorption and sometimes emission for HE2 lines, neutral helium lines, and prominent ionized. Further subdivision includes O3, O7, O9, etc. Spectral type O7 is the point at which the two intensities are equal and type O3 is the point at which line vanishes. Now comes the letter B. B-type stars are also very luminous and blue in color. Their spectra have natural helium lines and are very energetic. Their lifespan is relatively short, around 40 million years. Many stars that we can see from our naked eyes are of this type only. B-type stars are originated from an OB association that is related to giant molecular clouds. Now the question here is what is an OB association? An OB association is a loose grouping of several thousand stars, a small fraction of which are spectral type O and B. B-type stars also produce B-type spectrum and is also detected in O and A shell stars. B stars are a heterogeneous set of stars with B spectral types and emission lines. According to the research, it was found that they can have a disk that create and can create emission lines. They are considered to be main sequence stars, but a number of subgiants and giant stars are also included. Next comes letter A. A-type stars are young, around a few hundred million years. They have masses ranging from 1.4 to 2.1 times the mass of the Sun and surface temperatures between 7,112 Kelvin to 11,500 Kelvin. They appear bluish-white in color, very bright, and can be seen by our naked eyes. A-type stars don't have a convective zone or convective region i.e. a region where a layer of star is unstable to convection and as a result they lack strong stellar winds and are not able to bear magnetic dynamo. Research proved that gigantic planets formed around them are hard to detect using a certain method called Doppler spectroscopy. It is an indirect method for finding exoplanets, i.e. planets outside of the solar system and brown dwarfs from their radial velocity measurements. Next is type F. F-type stars are moderately hot and yellowish-white in color, usually weighing between 1.0 and 1.4 times the mass of the Sun. Their temperature lies between 6,000 Kelvin to 7,600 Kelvin. It is also believed that life can also exist on this particular type. They are known for emitting a large amount of light in the form of radiation, for example UV radiation, which is harming our planet Earth. They are likely to represent the brightest and hottest main sequence stars that could possibly allow life. The best example of F-type stars is Polaris, i.e. the current northern pole star, a type F7 and is 430 light years away. Next up we have letter G. G-type stars are also called yellow dwarf and are yellow in color and their weight is between 0.8 to 1.25 times the mass of the Sun. They are currently believed to be 100 light years away. Their surface temperatures are between 5,300 Kelvin and 6,000 Kelvin. Class G contains the yellow evolutionary void, i.e. it is an area in the Hertzsprung-Russell diagram where atmospheres of blue ward evolving super and hypergiants are moderately unstable. Thus, this type is unstable for supergiants to be compared to hotter and brighter OBAF type stars. G type stars radiate more light towards the infrared end of the spectrum. The most famous G type, G2 type star is the Sun. Each second the Sun fuses approximately 600 million tons of hydrogen into helium in a process known as the proton-proton chain. Four hydrogens form one helium, converting about four million tons of matter to energy. Apart from that, other known stars under this type as Alpha Centauri A, Tau Ceti, 
and 51 Pegasi. Next is Type K. K-type stars appear orange and are cooler than the Sun. Their range of temperature is between 3,500 Kelvin to 6,000 Kelvin. They are of intermediate size between M-type and G-type. The key interest for astronomers is to research this type to find life on this star because of their stability, small mass, greater heat zones, and they emit less UV rays. Also, the velocity of solar wind is not too much. Thus, they are the most approving stars to focus on the research for exoplanets and extraterrestrial life. The nearest K-type stars known are Epsilon Eridani, which is 10.5 light years away, HD 192310 is 29 light years away, Gliese 86 is 35 light years away, and 54 Piscium is 36 light years away. And the last we have is Type M. M-type stars, also known as red dwarfs, are the smallest and coolest red color star with such low luminosity that none can be seen by our naked eyes. Despite it being called the smallest, they too include some giant, supergiant stars and hypergiant stars. The range of their surface temperature is from 2400 Kelvin to 3700 Kelvin. Red dwarf stars have masses from about 0.08 to 0.6 times that of the Sun. Lighter stars are more abundant in space than the heavier stars. That is why they are the most common and tend to live longer than usual. There are other extended spectral types that have also been included. A number of new spectral types have been taken into use from newly discovered types of stars. This is a basic video, so we will not include these extended spectral types. But if you want to know more about them, let us know in the comment section and we will make a new video only on these new spectral types. The basis of the current system of classification of spectral types began in the late 1800s and is still going on and will carry for another few hundred or maybe more years because of its boundless, far-reaching description. Several spectral types, all previously used for non-standard stars in the mid-20th century, have been replaced during revisions of the stellar classification system. They may still be found in old editions of star catalogs. R and N have been subsumed into the new C class as CR and CN. Humans may eventually be able to colonize any kind of stellar habitat. This section will address the possibility of life arising around other stars. Stability, luminosity, and lifespan are all factors in stellar habitability. We only know of one star that hosts life, and that is our own, a G-class star with an abundance of heavy elements and low variability in brightness. It is also unlike many stellar systems in that it only has one star in it. In the coming future, we hope to explore these endless boundaries of cosmos. In this video, we have discussed about the above spectral types. And if you want to know more about some of the extended types, let us know in the comment section. What do you think about these spectral classes of stars? Did you know about them before? What did you think about the video? Let us know in the comment section below. And don't forget to like the video and subscribe to our channel. And press the bell notification to remain notified about upcoming interesting videos.